Hello everyone and welcome, welcome to another historic video. So today we're going to be taking a look at a prison deck. But with a little bit of a twist, we're going to be utilizing some new cards from March the Machine Aftermath called Deification. So this is the newest enchantment from March of the Machine Aftermath. It is a two mana enchantment. When it enters battlefield, you get to choose a planeswalker type and the planeswalker you control of the chosen type has hexproof. And basically, as long as you control a creature, your planeswalker's loyalty cannot go below one, which means when you have a card like Gideon of the Trials, if you emblem with this card, you get an emblem that says, as long as you control Gideon Planeswalker, you can't lose the game and your opponent can't win the game. Which means, as long as you have a creature on the board and a deification enchantment on the board as well, Gideon of the Trials cannot be killed ever since attacking Gideon of the Trials will not lose its loyalty and the fact that it has a hexproof, it'll be incredibly hard to kill this planeswalker. Hence the emblem where it says you can't lose the game will basically win you the game eventually. But of course, you can always just target our creatures and kill the creatures, right? And then kill the Gideon of the Trials. That could happen. So to prevent that, we also play four copies of Sterling Grove. And since every card in this deck is going to be of enchantment type, even the creatures, everything will have Shroud, which means that you cannot target these cards. So not only that your opponent can't target our creatures, they can't target our Planeswalker, we also can't lose the game because of the emblem, hence creating a prison effect where your opponent can't win. So what can we take advantage of this situation and win the game? Well, you can wait it out and opponent decks out. That could be an option. That would be boring. So we're going to be playing two copies of Destiny Spinner, which is also an enchantment creatures. Opponent can't interact with that. And through tapping Sanctum Weaver, we're going to be generating a lot of mana since everything in our deck is going to be enchantment. And Destiny Spinner is going to just win out the game by creating a bunch of giant trample creatures. So I'm going to be trying this deck out in historic best of one this time. It's been a while since I've done a best of one video. So I'm going to be trying this deck out in best of one, but I'll also have a sideboard prepared for those that want to play this in best of three. And I also have a conclusion section at the end of the video to talk about the deck. So let's hop on over. Um... Kind of a bad hand, not gonna lie. We came and cast Gideon. We'll keep this one. Uh, I'll take a land. Pretty good. Take another land. Does that prowess? It does not. Okay, this way, now we can just guarantee block something. Or not. Just convenient goblin chain whirler. Hello? That's cool. Now. Ow, ow, ow. Yeah, that's a good sign. I love that. Gideon! Gideon, Gideon, Gideon. Okay. A lightning strike. Lightning strike again? Okay. Your 
weapons won't help you win. You should quit That's now. kind of scary that they just uh, launch a bunch of lightning strikes to me. Fight on without me. Okay. That is so interesting. Yeah, you definitely want to kill Gideon, right? Like, that just doesn't make sense. So they can't exert because we have Shroud. Um... Yeah. So they, uh, again, they can't target. So we'll do this now. And then make this thing unable to attack. And we'll have a Kami uh, blocking the Kenra here. Okay, we just need to find this card. Deification. And we just win the game. Uh, sure. Let's do this. We might actually win next turn. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Not quite. Not quite. Right? At least I don't think so. I think I think we could have done like uh, 14, 15, 16. Oh, maybe we could have. I don't know. Maybe we could have. I don't think so. Actually, never mind. What am I saying? What am I saying? Okay, first win. Against a mono red at that. So that's a good sign. So opponent is playing Zerda. Does that mean they are playing... Charbelcher? Because if they're playing Charbelcher, I should mulligan to Gideon, right? Hmm. Or nine lives. I guess we can start with this for now. Yeah, I made a mistake. Yeah, as soon as you see Zerda, you just hard mulligan to Gideon or uh, nine lives and you just win the game. So yeah, definitely I made a mistake here. I 100% made a mistake here. We might still be able to win if they can't combo off instantly here. 
So we'll see. It, it, it just all depends if they have um, exactly the two card combo here. If they don't have the two card combo, we can win. So this is a good sign, what they're doing now. So we're gonna grab 9 lives. So we'll play the 9 lives here. That's a good feeling, right? That is a good feeling. Especially versus Charbulcher. Um, sure. This is Reanimator. Oh, that's fine. If you're gonna reanimate that, that's totally fine. <laughs> okay. Goodbye. Next game, please. <laughs> I should have actually played Blasage there instead of the pathway on. No, what are you doing? I mean, okay. I think I think they take uh, Enchantress's presence. Oh, they're pissed. So the reason why this combo is so nasty is because even if they even if they can force on Sarah's emissary and then we can't win, right? By attacking, we can just keep passing until they deck out. Right? That's why this lock is infinitely stronger than um, 9 lives lock. But... Of course, it does require more setup. Okay, well, they haven't been really doing much. So we have one more copy of Destiny Spinner to win the game. Them drawing these, like, uh, thought seasons is kind of annoying. So what did they get rid of? Play another Sterling Grove. And we're gonna put a stop on our upkeep. Take out a Baffling and a land. Gotta sit this.
Wait, how many cards do I have to bottom? Like, what is this? Where's our Gideon? We went through half our deck. So we're gonna grab our Destiny Spinner here. Our Gideon is literally at the bottom. What is this? Boom! Next game. I really don't like hands without Sterling Grove. But the fact that we have a uh, rest in peace maybe could be fine. Like if they are, you know, um, a deck that, oh no. Not like this. Not the humans. Uh, sure. Do I want to give them a card when they're like, when they don't have lands? I think we have to. So greedy. What is this? That's annoying. So I have to give them a card again. Apparently not. That's good. So we have everything set up. Now we just need to find, since everything is protected now, we just need to find one enchantment and win the game. Okay, as for Sentinel there is kind of annoying. Um... Nice. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So if I play this, I can only pay for one. I feel like we should ossification.
Should I get rid of? Probably Thalia, right? We only have one legendary, so this still costs two mana. I think, uh, I don't know if I want to actually pop my Sterling Grove, actually, I'm thinking about it. But I'll put a stop here for now. I will definitely block one of them. Thank God. Esper Sentinel is gone. Actually, do we just win? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We have 8 enchantments. These are tapping for 8 mana each. Yeah, we, we just won. Right? We, we just win. Right, that's already like 32 damage. Okay. Can't be stopped. Won't be stopped. Um... Eh. Sure. I think... Okay, we'll, we'll try this. I think this is a mistake to keep, but we'll see. Yeah... I already regret it. Like, not having... Sterling Grove start is just a mistake. Right? It's, it's just a mistake. You should never play without the Sterling Grove on turn one. In the mulliganing stage, I mean. Oh, we get a turn. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. I'll take that. Okay, we don't need this many deification. Um, what is scarier, Balmor or Symmetry Sage? Balmor is a legend. Let's get rid of Symmetry Sage. Oh, what a card Symmetry Sage is! Like, such a broken card. Such a broken card. Okay, we're, we're taking a million damage. Good night. Um... Deck? Would you like to give me a Gideon here? <laughs> okay, it's not over yet. Um, it's not over yet, but... I will prove myself worthy. It is definitely not over yet. Because, you know, these creatures are not protected, you know? Full emblem. It's time to give up. This is why, gentlemen, this car here, Sterling Grove, is just too important. Wait, we might actually have a chance. 
we actually might have a chance. Oh, baby. Ow. Okay, so... Can we win here? We'll see. <laughs> How is this deck undefeated? Okay, so we just played a bunch of games and results are actually pretty good. So things I liked um, was that as I expected, there's still a lot of Charbelcher decks in the ladder. And if you see a companion Zerda, most likely they're going to be playing Charbelcher. So you just all you have to do is just mulligan to Gideon to just tank the damage. You just emblem immediately. As long as you control Gideon's Planeswalker, you can't lose the game. So, so that should delay a turn from them winning a game. And you also have 9 lives as well. If a source would deal damage to you, prevent that damage. So these two are good. We were also successful in getting this combo off. Deification and Gideon stalling into uh, eventual Destiny Spinner into winning the game. So that was pretty good. We also played against a Reanimator, which I also suspected our deck to face up against too, right? So normally 9 lives can't beat a Reanimator deck if they reanimate Sarah's Emissary and call enchantments. Call either enchantments or creature. And what happens is you do eventually deck out in cases like that. So in a scenario like that, uh, we already saw Gideon and deification combo actually does work better in that regard so i was actually happy to see a situation like that come up uh we also beat a model red which was a good sign uh we play four copies of baffling end we play two copies of ossification although ossification isn't going to be relevant unless you do have uh these basics so that's the only thing that I'm kind of like uh, hesitant whether or not we should play at Ossification, but I did end up putting Ossification just because it costs one less than a 3 mana enchantment that exiles and and you do also get to generate a forest off of this card. Uh, that situation didn't come up, but because we play 6 copies of basic, we also play 4 copies of Kami of Bamboo Groves that can generate a basic. So I feel like it should be sufficient enough. And other than that, uh, oh yeah. Uh, one copy of Rest in Peace did come in clutch versus a reanimator. So I was really happy to see Rest in Peace top deck there. Even if we didn't top deck a Rest in Peace, we should have been fine. Since they're not going to be able to win if they're playing the normal reanimator deck. Since we can deck out, they still can't win. Unless they have some way of removing Gideon of the Trials with, without targeting Gideon of the Trials. Since Deification does give, it, give the Planeswalker Hexproof. So... Yeah, all in all, I feel like it was a fun spinoff, honestly. I really liked it. So there's a metagame challenge going on right now, and I'm not going to be playing it. But let's say if you're interested in playing best of three, I do have the sideboard prepared. Uh, the only downside of this deck is probably the control deck. Control deck is going to the toughest matchup. That's why we have three copies of Invasion of Gobekin. The plus one plus one counter that you put on the, each of the creatures that attack this turn actually bypasses the shroud mechanic, so which is pretty good. We also have a, a singular one more copy of Destiny Spinner so that our creatures and enchantment spells can't be countered. And then we want to bring two more copies of Gideon Blackblade versus a control deck. And perhaps if opponent is playing Farewell, maybe playing a copy or two of Gideon's Intervention to name something like Farewell isn't a bad option either. There is that. And against like a Thoughtseize decks, we do have three copies of Leyline of Sanctity. So that's going to come in handy. Also, if you are playing against a Char Vulture, I don't know if anybody's going to play a best of three Char Vulture, but Char Vultures did win a bunch of metagame challenges in the last metagame. So who knows? You might actually find some people playing Char Vultures and Leyline of Sanctity is a great card versus them. 
And one more thing to mention is uh, Rakdos midrange. If they are playing Shogodra's Edict, you probably want to play one more copy, uh, two more copies of Gideon Blackblade, since uh, unironically it can protect the other Gideon, right? Since you can sacrifice this one instead of the other Gideon. Actually, come to think of it, if you read Gideon, Gideon of the Trials um, emblem, it says as long as you control a Gideon Planeswalker, you can't lose the game. So. Even if you keep the other Gideon, you can't lose the game that turn. So unless they have like double Sheldred's Edict on the same turn, they're not going to be able to get through your lock. And if they're planning on bringing in something like Brotherhood's End to get rid of your creatures to bypass Deification, then you can bring in some Invasion of Gobikins to pump your creatures up. So that's something you can do. So yeah, I don't really know if it's significantly better than the Nine Lives Solemnity version, but... I kind of like the fact that we don't just flat out lose to Farewell. Some people are even playing things like something like Back to Nature as well. So I, I don't know exactly who would actually play this considering I don't think anybody is expecting enchantments in best of three. But yeah, that is going to be it for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed the video so far. And if you did, as always, leave a like, comment below, subscribe, and I'll see you guys all later. Bye bye.